it's Thursday night, Singing Waters, how is everybody? So glad that um, another day out of work and come here and look forward to being with you guys. You know what, I'm going to start with prayer tonight. Ricky's got a great message about the garden and um, I think it's going to really bless you. But um, I just know that some of you like really tune in and really, really wanting a touch from God and or just, just really wanting to connect. And so I just want to take a minute and pray for that. And so so wherever you're at, the Lord just that the Lord will, will just touch you and fill you in a really neat way. So let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for those that tune in. I pray that those that are hungry to tune in to a message from my husband and I, Lord, that would, they would just um, position themselves to receive from you tonight. Lord, that you would fill them from their toes to their head, that you would give them assurance, you would encourage their spirits if they're feeling faint, that you would just breathe hope into circumstances in their life, that mm -hmm. you would give them faith, Lord, to ch the challenges and the fights that are before them. I just pray, Father, that it's no coincidence. So, Lord, they're yours. They're positioning themselves to learn more about you. I pray that revelation would come tonight. I pray that uh, unity among their families, among their um, church members, that you would bring us all, Lord, to understand more and more what it means to consecrate our lives to you, to lay our lives down to you so that we can be servants and connect with others. So, Lord, bless this message tonight and just fill us new and afresh with your love. In Jesus' name, mm. amen. amen. Okay, so what do we got tonight, Pastor? Well, uh, the message started from, um, I was out in the garden and I was working on some things there in the garden and... I started noticing the different types of plants that I have there. Mm -hmm. And some plants are doing pretty well, other plants not so well. But one of the things I noticed is that they were all green. All of them. Different looks, different types of plants, mm -hmm. but every single one was green. And I thought, you know, this is interesting because we should have color. We should have more colors. We, we should have diversity. And it was at that moment that I felt like God was speaking to me about... The diversity or the lack thereof in the church and how we tend to all gather together people of like mind people maybe of the same socioeconomic status mm -hmm. uh same culture whatever it is you know and we tend to go there because it's easier natural more natural to be there uh with people like that but one of the things that um god started to show me was that that it's a beautiful thing when you have a garden and especially when it has beautiful colors, mm -hmm. uh, different things represented. And so I started looking online and um, I, my subtitle, I, I, the title is God's Garden, uh, but the subtitle is Intentional Diversity. And it is my hope that over this series that we're going to look at what God is asking of us to create an intentional diverse community. Mm -hmm. That we would be mixed with all these different people and that we would be uh, doing life with them and actually learning from them and they learning from us. Um, and so the, and thereby uh, becoming a more complete person. And so um, so I went online and I was looking at, uh, well, what's what's a farm? You know, what's the difference between a farm and a garden? And I typed in uh, that question and then uh, this came out in, under Farm Homestead. It said, this person said, I think the division between gardening and farming is as simple as defining what you grow and why. The word gardener elicits images of flowers, perennial borders, specimen plantings, and places to sit amongst the foliage. It's more passive than active, not in the difference in work, but in the pace. Farming is an everyday, all the time type of gig. Maybe it's as simple a difference as growing more edibles than ornamentals. And so, so the purpose of a farm was to grow a multi, you know, grow a lot of things so you can basically sell them. It's your livelihood. It's what you mm -hmm. do. But a garden was a place kind of like a place to rest, a place yeah, to, to enjoy, a place to enjoy. Exactly. And so I started looking at different, uh, different things that were found in, in gardens. And I found it very interesting that there are different names and different types of gardens all over. You can have the, the rock gardens. You have the botanical garden like we have up, up here up the canyon. Um, you have the flower gardens. You have those that are made exactly just for smelling. Just so that because, because they have beautiful smells. Mm -hmm. We went to a butterfly garden. It was beautiful. We were in Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, you walk in in the mm -hmm. middle, middle of nowhere. It was really cold. And we walk yeah. into this warm place. Yeah. 
and there were thousands and thousands of butterflies, you know, and they had special plants made especially for those for those uh, butterflies. Mm -hmm. And so, so you have specific things. Kings used to have uh, uh, huge, huge gardens they, to this day. And so, um, so God just started showing me about the diversity mm -hmm. of the garden. And, um, and then he took me back to Genesis chapter 1. And I just started seeing the diversity of God's creation, right? Mm -hmm. um, in each, uh, verse 11 of chapter 1, God said, Let the land sprout with vegetation. And then he says, Every sort of seed-bearing plant and trees that grow seed-bearing fruit. So he was every sort, like he was creating different types. Mm -hmm. Verse 20, he says, let the waters swarm with fish and other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. And so then you have multiple species of birds, mm -hmm. uh, multiple types of fish. Verse 24, God said, let the earth produce every sort of animal, each producing offspring of the same kind, livestock, small animals that scurry along the ground, and wild animals. And so he had every sort of animal, and but within each animal kingdom, they were growing, they were basically creating the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then he goes to man, verse 26. And then God said, let us, now it's plural, make man, make human beings in our image to be our, like ourselves. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals mm -hmm. on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So we are uniquely created by God to be one, just one race, one human race is what it's God It's interesting had. though that he put us in a garden is that that was the first thing that he had us do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want you to tend the ground right. because he knew there would be great purpose and great joy because mm -hmm. there's a lot of joy for the people that love to garden. They, you know, for me, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to <laughs> tap into this because I kill, you know, I kill plastic plants. Um, they get weird fungus on them. It's like, I don't even understand sometimes how to do plants. But I know how I feel when I'm in someone's garden. I always walk into someone who has a lot of plants and I'm like, gosh, I wish that I had a garden like you. Or why can't I have this? Does it just because I'm not patient enough? Is it because I really don't know what to do with the dirt and where to put the seed? And so I feel like um, it's interesting that when, God, when Adam and Eve were placed in the garden, how beautiful it must have looked. And he's like, just tend this. Mm -hmm. Just just be in this garden and let mm -hmm. it bless you. And so then after that, you know, I mean, they were enjoying their time with God. He would show up at the garden in the, in the late afternoon. And, um, and then, of course, the fall came. And in the fall, after the fall, they were then banished from that place. And so then life, you know, you see through the Old Testament, you see the how mankind, you know, continues to change and all these mm -hmm. different things, you know, God raises up a nation and, you know, just so many dynamics. And, but you, as you look through the Old Testament, you will find many gardens that are mentioned throughout. Kings had them. Uh, the Song of Solomon talks a lot about the garden. Um, so there are many different uh, um, words that were tied to the word garden. And so then you get to now to the New Testament and Jesus um, mm -hmm. is having to deal in a garden. But this is a different garden. It's called the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus w went with his disciples to this place. And he said to them, stay here while I go over there and pray. And he took Peter and Zebedee's two sons with him. He was beginning to feel deep anguish. And he said to them, my anguish is so great that I feel mm -hmm. as if I'm dying. Wait here and stay awake with me. Mm -hmm. And so here he had to now, he had to deal with his, the reality of that he would be giving his life for us. And if you remember the story, you know, he was within himself. He says, Father, if there's under the way, please, mm -hmm. but nevertheless, let your will be done. So there was a death there mm -hmm. of his self where he had to say, I, I just, I need to do this, right? I need to do this. And so we see that that garden, you know, it may have been a beautiful garden, but for him at that moment, um, it was very a very painful moment mm -hmm. for him because the reality of what he was going to go through. And then later on, right after that, he's arrested. And then he's taken up to um, where he is going to be crucified. Well, right next to the where he was going to be crucified was another, another garden. And it was the Garden of Arimathea. Mm -hmm. And it's known as the Garden of the Tomb today. Well, in that garden is where Jesus was buried, right? He's put in the tomb, and three days later he rise, rises. 
So that's also considered like the garden of life, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. But again, it was another garden. It mm-hmm. was another garden. And so the Bible is a story about gardens, you know? In one, Adam takes a fall. In the other, Jesus takes a stand. And the other one, God was seeking Adam because Adam was hiding from him. Mm-hmm. And the other, Jesus seeks God and says, Father, you know, let's do this. And one, Adam hides from God. And another, Jesus emerges from the tomb. Mm, in one, and, and then in the other one, Satan led Adam to a tree to, to fall. And yet Jesus leads himself and allows himself to be put on a tree mm-hmm. so that he could restore us mm-hmm. to a relationship. And so, so there's an there's a interesting dynamic that's going on here as we look at the scriptures. We recognize that, that there are, there are different, um, different garden scenes that are going on. But one of the most interesting things that I found was that in the midst of all that, there were, um, there were these moments that, that Jesus wanted them to really understand what was going on with them. And then he says, um, he says at the end, he says, I want you to, I, here's what I want you to do. I want you to make disciples of all nations. And in that, in that um, make disciples of all nations, he uses a very interesting word. It's called ethnos. And that word ethnos means ethnic or people groups. Mm-hmm. And that, that's what makes us diverse. Right. You know? And I think that one of the things that we look at is that, you know, we look at the ethnicity of people and we think, well, yeah, they're different. Well, see, yeah, they may look different. They may have a different cultural perspective. But we're all the same. We're all human beings. Right. We're all made the same. We're all made, we're all the made same. of the same mm-hmm. DNA. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and then, you know, as I started to look at that, I was just, you know, just praying about that. It's like, Lord, how do we become more diverse? And then he takes me to Revelation. And in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, it says that there was a throne, right? And underneath the throne was a river of life that flows through that. And then it says, down the river, there was in the middle of this river and on either side of the bank was the tree of life. And this tree of life has uh, fruit that it gives off every Mm -hmm. month, Mm -hmm. right? And then it says, and its leaves were for the healing of the nations. Mm -hmm. The healing of the nations. And I thought, wow, wait a minute. So I looked it up. And that word nations in Revelation is ethnos. It's the same word Jesus used when he was talking Mm -hmm. to his disciples Mm -hmm. when he told them, here, go tell the world, right? And then at that moment, I felt like God was kind of revealing to me that part of our work in healing the nations Mm -hmm. is to proclaim the gospel so that they can be restored to God, that they would know the good news, right? Because a lot of people don't understand where they are. They don't recognize that God has done everything for them, Mm -hmm. that he has sent his son and his son came to restore us to a right relationship with him. And he's given us his spirit. So now we have the spirit. We've been born again from above. Now we have the spirit of reconciliation. Mm-hmm. God can use us right. to bring other people to him. Right. He's given us, he's empowered us. He's given us authority. And so a lot of times we don't even understand really who we are and we don't really understand what we have in or us. Or what the work of bringing the ethnos together really looks like. That's right. Because we tend to pick a church of like-minded people, a church of lookalikes, people that we might want to hang out with. One of the things I loved about when we went to church and were a part of Benita um, is Benita was so diverse. I just, I loved that. It's like there were so many different ethnos. And um, even though Jeff was white, I don't think white was uh, the majority of mm. his church. A lot of... He, yeah, people. Asians and African Americans. and it was, it was just, it was Hispanics. Mm. It was just beautiful. And... Um, and when I was on staff there for a while, I don't, I just remember feeling so rich when I would be in church. And then when I would visit or be a part of a church that was more kind of segregated, I almost felt like it, the flavor wasn't there. It's almost mm-hmm. like when you're eating something that maybe didn't have the savoring that you would have liked. It didn't stay on the stove as long or didn't get the right spices. And so I feel like, it's a treat to have diversity and to be among it. Um, I loved the first time I went to a church that was very different than mine and hearing how everybody was calling out during worship. And I just thought, wow, this is a really cool experience. Um, and it just made me appreciate 
um, how creative and how diverse God is because God is the one that created all of this. So it kind of, sometimes when we get our vision of God and it gets smaller, we know we're missing out on something. Yeah. So anyway, go ahead, finish. We, we're tying it up with... Yeah, pretty much. Um, and so, so I wanted to share just, you know, how we as people have created a, mm. um, you know, either or mm. culture. Like um, you're either, you know, liberal or you're conservative or you're Republican or you're Democrat. <clears throat> you're either for Black Lives Matter or you're not. You're for All Lives Matter or you're not. And so it's what it's done is, is all these different categories that we have established for ourselves has, has put, separated us mm -hmm. from one another. Now, we all have certain opinions and certain things that we would say, yes, this is really important to me or that's really important to me. And that's what makes us unique and different. But at the same time, you know, I think we've kind of lost the, the understanding that we're all in this thing together. You know, we're all in this thing together. The enemy is not the piece of people that may disagree with me, you know, politically or, or even theologically. Um, they're not enemies. They're not enemies. They're human beings that are still trying to figure this thing out. And so part of our work mm -hmm. is to be able to position ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, so that way we can be available to them and for mm -hmm. them. So that way, maybe we'll have an opportunity one day, build some relationships. Yeah, yes. And then if we talk from a, a peaceful and, and a relationship that we trust each other, mm -hmm. then I could say something that maybe they may not agree with, but they'll say, but this is my friend, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and maybe they'll be more open to listen to what maybe my perspective is. And as I, with them, um, I've learned a lot of things and I've changed a lot of, in a lot of ways because of my relationships that I've had with people over the years, even my own theology has been changed, you know, new paradigms have been revealed to me mm -hmm. um, as I've met new people, you know, and, and I didn't mm -hmm. limit myself to just my little circle. Um, I was willing and wanted to learn of others and mm -hmm. see what they see, mm -hmm. hear what they hear and uh, people that I'd never heard of. Now I, I read their material. Um, and so I think that that's part of the thing, but there had to be an intentionality. There had to come a point where there was a a place, a stirring in our hearts where we said, I want to do this, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the things that you and I both do, you know, a lot is that it is our intention here in this community um, to be connected to every single different facet of this town mm -hmm. because it is our prayer and our hope that we could be a blessing to them. Mm -hmm. But, um, but sometimes we, we might limit ourselves because of, um, the way we well, treat them or insecurities, whatever. Mm -hmm. And and I think that one of the things that we really need to look at is it's the big picture. What is the big picture? Well, the big picture is that every single human being here on this island and in this world it was created in the image of God. That is the big picture. Mm -hmm. And the big picture is that the enemy has sought to deceive them and lead them through darkness and take them and destroy them. That's his job. That's what he's trying to do. Mm -hmm. So we are not to help with that we're to keep them from falling to those things and to love them and to take care of them mm -hmm. to bless them mm -hmm. to speak truth into them to speak mm -hmm. into their inner man and say look you are created in the image of god and god has done everything for you so that you could walk with him so that you could experience him at a deep level mm -hmm. so that you could be a blessing to those around you god can change your circumstances god can lead you through things. He can give you strength even in the midst of difficult times as, mm -hmm. as we're going through right now. He gives you the power and the strength to be able to deal with this kind of madness that we're going through. At the same time, he opens up doors for us to be able to talk to people mm -hmm. and share with them over hope and our love that we have. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think the key is to be able to recognize that we're, we're like in this big garden. So over the next few weeks, I'm going to be looking at some practical ways of how we can plant new plants in our garden and how we can not just put them in a pot, but put them in the ground. And I'm going to mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that, mm -hmm. of how we stick them in the ground. That means we've made a commitment to that plant. We put it in a pot, we can always get rid of the pot. We can always move the pot somewhere else. We can get rid of it, sell it or whatever. But when you stick a plant in the ground, you've made a commitment. And I believe that we need to make that commitment to one another. Mm -hmm. No matter what their background is, no matter what their perspective is, we need to make a commitment to one another as human beings. Mm. And when we go at that level, that's when things can change. Amen. Let's Amen. pray for us, Pastor. It sounds Amen. good. Father, I, I just pray, God, that um, you would help us 
to understand God from your perspective, what you have done for us and in us. And I ask God that um, you would bless every single person that hears this message, Mm -hmm. that they would be challenged, Lord God, to look around them and to look for the diverse plants that Mm -hmm. may be just around them, Lord God, and that Mm -hmm. you would help them to be able to, number one, reach out to them. And Lord God, as we look at how we can practically uh, plant them in the garden of our life, that uh, Father, that our homes, our communities would be incredibly diverse as we live together and we enjoy one another's differences, Lord God, and that we would not just uh, segregate ourselves to becoming like farms, Lord, and that we were just same same people being together doing the same thing. I pray, Father, for a diversity, Lord God, that would heal the nations, a mm-hmm. diversity that would change our country, that would change our towns, change our homes. Mm-hmm. So, Father, thank you for your blessing. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives, and we just trust you for what you will do in our future. In Jesus' name. Amen. See y'all next week. Amen. Have a Thank great you. week. Blessings.